Hello everyone, my name is Sarah Power Fox, and today I have the Yu-Gi-Oh! Structure Deck Spirit Charmers uh, Structure Deck. I don't know why I said that twice, but um, yeah, I, this is the very long-awaited Charmer Deck. It uh, features the four main Charmers, the four main elements, uh, Fire, Water, Wind, Earth, and uh, yeah. Unfortunately, it does not feature the Light and Dark Charmers, but I mean, they are kind of they're related, but they're they're still like kind of away from the main archetype. But yeah, I digress. So we're gonna be opening this today, um, and we're gonna kind of look through all the cards. And um, I think I'm also going to put in a deck profile, um, building the deck because I did buy three of these, so um, I can build a deck just out of these three up three boxes, and uh, I'll see what I can come up with. So yeah, I'll go ahead and uh, get the box open for you real quick. All right, so let's get into it. Um. So I think this deck is special in the fact that it's not like other starter deck or structure decks. One, there we go. Yeah, it's got a. Ooh, what is this? All right, we'll look at this real quick. I'll go ahead and pop this bad boy open. Oh, that's beautiful. Oh. Oh yeah, that's adorable. If I could get this laminated, I totally would. Um, I'm actually looking at doing that just so I can keep that. Maybe there's a, a like a mouse pad material mat like this one right here my noble knight one that i've had for gosh over a decade now almost God, when did the noble knight deck, deck come out the, the platinum rare exclusive noble knight deck that was super like expensive and didn't even feature a lot of the main like ones okay so i do you do get a special token and it looks like it's the same as the mat which is pretty Freaking adorable. And you do get an altar art for the familiar possessed, and we got Asua. That's pretty cool. Alright, let's see here. We got, if I can get it to focus, um, Awakening of the Possessed Nefarious Archfiend. Okay, let's see what its effect says. Um, you can special summon this card from your hand or deck by sending one face of a spellcaster monster and one face of level four lower earth monster you control the graveyard. You can only use each of the following effects of awakening, possessed, nefarious, or archfiend once per turn. When this card is special summoned by its effect, you can special summon one level four or lower monster from your graveyard, but negate its effects. Okay. <clears throat> and if this card is sent from the field to the graveyard, you can add one spiritual earth art card or possessed spell and trap card from your deck to your hand. Okay. Oh, it's a level 5. Oh, and we get an Inari Fire, which... Hold on. Let me see here. Looks like it's the same, but fire-based. Yeah, <clears throat> for sure. This is the new field spell for them that is called Grand Spiritual Art Ichirin. I Ichirin? I, I don't know. Now get your opponent's first monster effect that resolves each turn while you control a spellcaster monster with 1,500 defense. During your main phase, you can reveal one... Spellcaster monster from your hand, and if you do, add one monster with the same attribute, but 1,500 attack and 200 defense from your deck to your hand. And if you do that, shuffle the revealed card into the deck. You can only use this effect of Grand Spiritual Art, each hitting once per turn. Okay. I I can see how that could work. Um, Maybe, let me see here. So it requires 1,500 defense, and then 1,500 attack and 200 defense. I'm sure you could build an engine out of that. There's probably plenty of monsters that are monotype that you could work around with, like uh, maybe a Fire Warrior deck, or um, a lot of Fire-type monsters have that 200 defense, and uh, I'm sure a lot of them have 1,500. I'm sure you could build something out of that. Um, this is Spirit Charmers, the card that is the, the deck is named after, after and uh, it is beautiful. Discard one card, take two cards from your deck with different names from each other that are Charmer monsters, Familiar, Possessed monsters, and or Possessed spell and trap cards. Add one of them to your hand, set the other. You can only activate one Spirit Charmers per turn. Oh, okay, so that, that's, a, that's a quick and easy way to get out your Charmers, um, like the base ones that can flip up and have their flip effects, or you can get your um, Spell and Trap cards out. It's actually pretty cool. Uh, we have a Regeki, just a Super Regeki. Interesting. I still have my Spirit, I, I, spirit my, my Secret Rare from a while back, so... Cool to have a super version. Possessed Partnerships. Um, special summon one spellcaster type monster with 1500 defense from your deck, from your graveyard, hand or grave. 
Special Summon 1 <laughs> Spellcaster Monster with 1500 defense from your hand or graveyard in attack position or face down defense position. Then, if you control monsters with up to two or more different attrib attributes, you can destroy one face-up card in the field. You can banish this card from your graveyard, then target one possessed continuous spell trap card in your graveyard, place a face-up in your field. You can only use this, uh, use one possessed partnerships effect per turn and only once that turn. Okay, so... You can special summon one spellcaster monster with 1500 defense from your hand or graveyard in attack position or face down defense, which can be very useful. There's a lot of monsters that have defense in that range. So any any, any spellcaster monster with 1500 defense, uh, I can't think of any off the top of my head, but uh, I'm sure Endymion support or, or Odd Eyes Magician support would probably be um, experimented with just for that effect right there. Um, and then if you control a monster with two or more different attributes, you can destroy one face of card in the field. That's pretty cool. Um, you can banish it from your graveyard, then target one possess continuous spell trap card from your graveyard, and add it to your hand. That's actually pretty cool. So it's got three different effects, it looks like, um, and you can only activate one per turn. Okay, so that's cool. And of course you get your charmer, so you have Asua, Iria, Hida, um, Win. then you get their their beasts, you get Nefarious Archfiend, and they, they all have the same effects, they're just different elements. So as long as you control a spellcast time monster, like uh, Ranryo here. Um, you can special summon it from your hand, uh, and if the card is destroyed by battle card effect and sent to the graveyard, you can target one uh, monster with 1500 attack or defense in your graveyard. So they can summon each other out, and they summon when you have one of the spellcasters on the field. Um, yeah, so that, that's pretty cool. And it doesn't have to be type specific either. As long as you control a spellcaster type monster, you can special summon them out. You get Fairy, fairy Tale Sleeper, which uh, is actually probably the best of the fairy tales in here. Uh, fairy Tale Rella, um, and then Fairy Tale Luna. Or maybe it's Luna that's the best. I don't know. I, I like Luna um, a lot. Um, Witchcrafter Golem Aruru. Um, I don't ever think I've used that card. Dark Dorido. Very useful because of its uh, its pendulum effect. I think you can pair this with... Um, there, there's one you can probably pair it with. Uh, I'm thinking Magical Abductor. Um, it's got a good scale for this deck. I think I think it's a scale of two. Um, so you can get three and, five, three and level four monsters. So... You could use Dark Dorado in that in this deck for that purpose. Uh, Witch of the Black Forest, always a good card. Effect Veiler, of course. Denko Seka, which is a really easy pull, a really easy uh, reprint for this card to get, because um, it is kind of a hard card to get. Um, it's got a good good effect. You can lock out your opponent from using their spell and trap cards, um, which can come in handy, but I think it also locks you out too. Yeah, you can't special summon it, but uh, and while you control no spell or while you control no set spells or traps, and your player can set spell or traps. Yeah, basically it just it locks out the field as long as you don't have anything on the field. So it could be good for like uh, using your charmers to grab one of their monsters and then locking them out of their field so that they can't you know just pop your charmer or or whatever you know. Um, and then awakening of the possessed. Uh, okay, so this is a continuous spell, not a field spell. I love the art on it. Super super cool. Um, yeah, just. Uh, Secret of the Secret of the Legend of Spellcasters, always good. Spellbook of Knowledge, hey. I uh, actually run a spellbook, uh, spell counter deck, so this could actually be pretty cool. For that, um, Terraforming, Book of Eclipse, always good for flip. Twin Twisters, Dark Ruler No More, that's the big one that everybody's really looking at. Um, I think I still have my secret from the Megatons, but, uh, you yeah. know. Unpossessed. And then you get all your spiritual arts, which are all different elemental types, like tribute earth monster, target one level four, lower earth monster in your graveyard. Um, I think if they're all the same. Oh no, they actually do have different effects. Okay, cool, cool. Uh, metaverse, add a spell card from your deck, and uh, yeah, another terraforming, essentially dimensional barrier. Um, I think that's okay. Solemn warning, pretty good. And then you get uh, four copies of the Familiar Possessed without the Ultra Art and their common, which is fine. So, yeah, that's the whole deck. You get your Avon Trident in the back. Um, so I think I'm going to take some time to read the cards and maybe build a deck out of this. Um, we'll see. I know that there are two more of these guys, uh, the Wind one and the Water one, uh, Gigabyte and uh, Renryu. Um, which I think are in Rise of the Duelist, or they're in the Phantom Rage set. But still, um, I do love the Asua. Um, so let me see. I actually do have the other decks here. I have... But, uh, I have... So I, I'm missing Era, the water one. Okay, cool. 
Maybe I can find somebody who has a spare copy of it. Um, so yeah, cool. All right, well, that was uh, this portion, and I'm going to go ahead and cut it here, and uh, when it picks back up, we'll be uh, building the deck. So I'll see you guys in that part. Right, goodbye. See you in, like, for you, five seconds. For me, probably, like, a day. <laughs> All right. All right, um, here we are with the deck profile. Um, I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do with this, um, but I went for kind of a build that's pure... Um, just taking advantage of all the uh, spell charmers. Um, I'm sure there's a much more competitive build, but this is uh, more for fun for me. Um, it is a 40 card deck profile, so um, I'm sure you could make like, a 50 card deck profile, and it'd probably be pretty good. Um, especially given there's a lot of searching in the deck now, like a ton of searching in the deck. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead. I've got one of each of the spiritual arts. Um, just because they all have different effects and they can come in handy. Um, I'm not expecting to use these every game, but uh, be fun to use them. Then I've got two, uh, or one of them, one of unpossessed, one of unpossessed. Um, it's a continuous spell or continuous trap, and you can pull it out uh, using a lot of the new spell cards and trap cards. Um, so you can pretty much get to it whenever you need to, and it gives an 800 attack boost to all of your spellcaster type monsters uh, when they attack and stuff or when they get attacked. Uh, it's actually pretty cool. Um, and I think having one is fine. Um, my only issue is I don't know how I would personally just keep protected. But, uh, I mean, this isn't a competitive game, so... Or this isn't a competitive deck, so I'm not worried about it. Then I'm running two uh, or three of Possessed Partnerships. Um, the new trap of the deck. It's pretty good. Um, I think you probably end up using Spirit Charmers more than you'd be using this. Uh, maybe, like, two of this in a competitive deck, maybe. Um, but I like it, and I think it'd be good in this deck. Because um, I think in, the, in a competitive variant, you'd probably only be running, like, one of the main monsters, which are the ones that have 1,500 defense. Um, and maybe, like, a couple of, like, maybe one of each of, like, Rian Ryu, Gigabyte, all those. Um, I think it has to be Spellcaster, doesn't it? Oh, yeah, so you'd be only probably only running one of the base charmers anyway. So you'd probably, like, run a, one or two of these uh, in a competitive build. I'm not sure, maybe. <laughs> I'm not a big competitive guy, but that's what I would assume would be ran competitively. Um, we're running one of Awakening of the Possessed, um, just a continuous spell, again, you can pull it out with, uh, Spirit Charmers, so, easy to pull out, the effect, uh, gives you 300 attack and, um, lets you get boosted for each different defense and stuff, or a different element you have on field, which is really good, because I'm running one of each type. I'm running two Terraforming, so I can get to, uh, Spiritual Art, e Ichirin, I think that's what it is, e e e Ichirin. However you pronounce it, two terraforming, it gives me basically like four copies of the card because I'm only running, running two in this uh, build. I feel like three was a bit too much. One book of Eclipse, um, we have flip monsters. I'm only running one of the charmers, of the base charmers, so I don't think I'll need too many of this. Um, I don't even know if it's legal for tournament play, so you might, uh, your mileage, mileage might vary. Um, I'm running two of Great Spiritual Art, or Grand Spiritual Art, each ring. it's the field spell. Um, it actually helps out a lot with getting your, uh, stuff together, and I think, yeah, you can, uh, add a spellcaster from your hand and, you know, add an attribute of monster with the same attribute from your deck to your hand. So it gets you to your familiar, uh, your possessed monsters, the Ryu and all them. So, uh, I don't know. Running three of, again, Spirit Charmers, I think this is probably the best card in this deck, for sure, because, I mean... You get to add so much stuff with it, and you can activate it from, you know, your opponent's turn and everything. So you take two cards from different, you know, names from their Charmer Monsters, Familiar Possessed, and or Possessed Spell Traps, add one to your hand, and then lay the other one down. So, m more often than not, you're going to go for uh, either the Flip Charmers, or you're going to go for one of your uh, Spells or Traps. Um, and, I mean, given that, you know, if you're playing this card more defensively, this is more of a take turn or turn two deck. Um, you're playing defensively, so your opponent will bust out a bunch of stuff, and they would summon a monster, and hopefully you have a type that would, uh, a, spell, a charmer that would be able to take care of that type, um, and you could just take their boss monster. Like, just jack it from them by playing this card on their turn. You know, those are, those are, that's one of the use cases I thought of. I'm sure you could think of some more, um, then I've got Fairy Tail Luna, one copy, um, Really good to add the uh, Familiar Possessed to your hand. 
and its effect is actually really good because you can return one card from the field to the hand. Otherwise, your opponent has to get rid of a copy of the card from their deck. So it's it's a multi-purpose kind of thing. One rich witchcrafter golem aru. Um, you can special summon from the hand pretty easily. So uh, just kind of a big beat stick, and it returns to the hand the next turn. So um, allows you to return a card your opponent controls to the hand. Um, and yeah, just easy. Easy big beater and gets rid of something quickly. A Dark Dorado, uh, really running it for its pendulum effect here, just to give my monsters a boost in attack power because they're not really that great. Um, if you wanted to run extra deck monsters, you could run all of the uh, the Link monsters, the like the Miss Starboy, um, the Earth one, all those different ones to gain uh, attack boosting for different elements. Um, though I don't know how effective that could be. Um, they also have the uh, Charmers as Link Monsters coming out, which I do have a Hita, and I know they released Iria recently. Um, so getting getting a couple copies of those would probably do really good in this deck. Um, I don't know if they're all released element-wise. Um, but yeah, Dark Dorado is here mainly for this effect. Again, it's not competitive build, but you know. Um, I'm running two of these guys, two of each of these guys. Um, if I had the Ranryu and the Gigabyte versions, I would run two of those as well because honestly the, these effects are really good and you can pull the Ranryu and, and Gigabyte and all them back out from like anywhere pretty much most of the time in this, with a lot of the new cards. So if, if I were able to get two of those, of each of those different um, cards, I would definitely run two of them in, in this deck because these cards are really good. Really good. Really good. <laughs> you could actually run these in a lot of different decks. Um... Two of Ramryu, two of an Ari Fire, two of Gigabyte, and two of Nefarious Archfiend, Eater of Nefariousness, just because they're easy special summon tools. They're level four, and you can use them to Link Summon, Exceed Summon, pop off with a bunch of extra deck monsters, and that's really the only reason they're here. Um, that, and you can put bodies on the board to defend. Uh, I mean, it, it, they have a lot of different use cases, I'm sure you could figure out. Um, sack material... Um, you can use these in any spellcaster deck because their effects just require you to have a uh, spellcaster, and yeah, that's it. And then they special summon each other from the graveyard in the deck, so they really just recycle them, them each other like crazy. So running a few of these guys, a couple of these guys, just to keep bodies on the board and special summons and all that, is not a bad idea. Um, so, and then I'm running one of each of the base charmers and one of the familiar possessed charmers. Um, I mean. Really, the deck is themed around them, but I feel having multiple copies of each of them is just going to hinder more than it's going to help. Um, you've got plenty of support in your spells and traps to keep them on the board, to get them on the board, to, to just do everything you need with them. Um, I feel like running more than one of each of them is going to be detrimental in the long run. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe there are people that are going to build this a lot better than I. I'm not sure. But I do know that, as I'm looking at it right now, running one of each of them is fine for the moment. Um, this is before I've play-tested it, really. Um, but I know that Familiar Possessed, you might you might want to take a couple of the other extra cards, like the Witchcrafter Golem Aru, uh, maybe cut down the uh, Ranryu and Fairy Seeker in Ari Fire and Gigabyte down to one copy per um, monster, and then throw in a couple more of each of these base charmers. But other than that, I mean... I don't really think having a ton of them is going to be super, you know, important. Um, maybe you're familiar possession you could use a couple more of, but yeah, I think you're going to be able to get a lot of these out pretty quick and a lot of them out, uh, keep them out for a decently long time given a lot of the cards in the deck. So, I don't know, that's just my personal build. Um, again, it's not a competitive build. If I wanted to build competitive, I would throw in a lot of extra deck um, kind of setups, which I do plan to throw some in here um, just for funsies. Um, and I'd probably link a lot of different choices if I had a lot of cards to go with it. But as it stands for now, I think this would be a fun, a for fun deck. Um, I don't know um, what other people's uh, concepts are. Also, we have our beautiful tokens right here. Uh, I love these. I want to get um, another copy of the uh, of this one right here because I only have one of them. And if I could have four tokens, all these, it'd be beautiful. Um, but yeah. So that's my deck profile. Um, let me get what you guys think. Maybe you guys can come up with something a little better. I'm sure I'm not a competitive player, so I'm not like in that mindset. And 
Um, with that, I don't know exactly who I would even think to go to for a better deck profile if you're wanting more competitive. Maybe Simo. Simo probably a good idea. Simo does a lot of competitive profiles. Team Samurai X. Yeah, if you guys enjoyed this, uh, go ahead and let me know what you think, and uh, let me know what you could definitely, what I could definitely improve in this. Any ideas? Any extra cards I could throw in here? Because I'm sure this is by far not the best deck in the world. So yeah, all right. Yeah, uh, y'all have a great day. Goodbye.